I am Dr. M. Sudhir, Senior Gastroenterologist from Pace Hospital. Today I am going to talk on Barrett's esophagus. Let us know what Barrett's esophagus is. Normally the esophagus contains the, the squamous epithelium up to the GE junction. Now in some conditions what happens, the intestine mucosa comes into place with this GE junction and this is known as Barrett's esophagus. Let us know what are the causes for this Barrett's esophagus. Generally, it is uh, not fully known what is the actual cause, but Barrett's esophagus is known to occur in long-standing gastroesophageal reflux disease, that is GERD. Why it occurs in such a condition, it is not known. But however, there are other predisposing factors for this occurrence, especially a long-standing GERD, an elderly person having GERD, or a patient is smoking, or if the patient is also a heavy person, like an obese person. So these are the predisposing factors for this Barrett's esophagus. This is very important because Barrett's esophagus is a pre-malignant condition and if it is neglected, it can lead to adenocarcinoma of the esophagus. Now what happens in this Barrett's esophagus? In what way it can manifest endoscopically? There are three types of uh, problems which can occur. Either it could be a, a, a sessile or a uh, polypoidal growth or it can be a, a flat lesion or it can be a uh, deep ulcerated lesion. So these findings are detected on endoscopy. Depending on the type of the lesion, the class, it is classified with mainly three types. That is uh, uh, polypoidal or cystoid, that is type 1 and type 2 is a flat lesion and type 3 is ulcerated lesion. Again, there are subtypes in this that we need not go into the detail of it. Now, the main purpose of this is because how to treat depends on this type of lesion and then how to manage endoscopically or whether the patient requires any biopsy. The clinical features of Barrett's esophagus, clinically it is not detectable. Patients do not have any specific symptoms concerning Barrett's esophagus. They have mainly GERD symptoms only. So all patients of GERD has to be screened for the Barrett's esophagus. And then, you know, uh, especially the patient is having a long standing GERD or patient is a heavy person or the patient is not responding to PPIs, definitely the, we have to be, we look very closely into the GE junction. Now, what are the places where we have to look? It is one centimeter above the GE junction and we have to look for uh, the, uh, the prolonged uh, tongue like margins of the, the mucosa coming into the esophagus. More than 4 centimeters is very important, but less than 4 centimeters also we have to be very careful. And uh, how to detect this in a more uh, early stage? We have different modalities. A routine endoscopic screening is important, and then we have other endoscopic techniques like uh, NBI, this uh, narrow band imaging, or uh, then we have uh, this uh, uh, <coughs> FICE that is a flexible uh, image uh, intensifying you know, uh, color uh, enhancement. Then we have you know, other modalities like eye scan also. These are other modalities by which we can detect Barrett's esophagus in an early stage. And biopsy is very important to make a diagnosis. Uh, the different stages of uh, Barrett's esophagus, that is you know, patients uh, having Barrett's esophagus without any dysplasia, the second is having, the patient is having low grade dysplasia. Next is comes is the high grade dysplasia and the other one is the ICM, that is the intracellular malignancy and the last one is the uh, overt adenocarcinoma. So these are the five stages. Depending on the type of biopsy findings, the treatment will vary. And screening is also very important, with the patient, especially the patient is having a low grade dysplasia. The higher the dysplasia is uh, more cancerous. How do we manage a case of Barrett's esophagus? The primary treatment is mainly treating the GERD and then and the next thing is surveillance. So uh, catching the patient early is very important. As I told you know Barrett's esophagus without any dysplasia, it does not require any treatment but a periodical endoscopy has to be done. Next comes the patient with a low grade dysplasia. Again there is no active treatment for this but a repeated biopsy has to be done. For example, uh, <coughs> the patients having low grade dysplasia on day one, again we will have to repeat it after few months, again the repeat biopsy uh, every three years or something like that. And then when the patient is having a high grade dysplasia, definitely we will have to intervene uh, endoscopically. And uh, this high grade dysplasia is very highly malignant. 
the actually the malignancy rate can vary in a uh, Barrett's system because from 0 0.12 to 12 percent. So, you can imagine the spectrum of uh, the instance of uh, carcinoma or esophagus in this Barrett's figures. Now, how do we treat? We have different modalities endoscopically that is one is known as APC that is argon plasma coagulation. The second one is radio frequency ablation and the next one comes as the uh, uh, submucosal resection or endo uh, EMR or the endo, endo mucosal resection. So, these are the different ways of treating. So, depending on the type of lesion we have to treat accordingly. These are different methods the more technical uh, methods for a common man, but you know they are all non-invasive. And then you know even though we do this uh, repeat biopsy is imp very important in the follow up of the patients, because what happens uh, there can be recurrence of uh, the dysplasia or malignancy in spite of the treatment. So, that is why periodic surveillance is very important. Now, when we go to the prognosis or the long term outcome of uh, Barrett's esophagus, as I told you the first stage it does not require much of uh, concern, but however surveillance is important. But in the subsequently if the biopsy shows a high grade dysplasia or uh, uh, malignancy, the such patient has to be closely monitored endoscopically repeatedly and repeat biopsy has to be taken. And especially when we take a biopsy, we have to go for a 4 quadrant biopsy of 1 to 2 centimeter part above the GE junction. This gives a clear picture of whether the patient is having recurrence of Barrett is this is very pre malignant condition. So, in such a case, you know, we will have to be very closely monitoring it. So, prognosis varies depending on the type of pathology. So, we will have to be very cautious about uh, observing detection as well as in the treatment of this Barrett's esophagus. Let me point out for some important tips uh, for preventing gastrointestinal diseases. You know the gastrointestinal diseases are so many and you know so many causes are there, so many infections are there, but mainly we should not forget about the diet related problems. Because diet is one thing which is very much uh, incrementing factor or rather precipitating or aggravating factors for the existing disease. Especially we all follow uh, the traditional diet you know is, is being changing into the westernized diet. This happens because of all this junk food and then high fatty, high saturated fat and then in a lot of uh, spicy and then so all these things are very dangerous to the body. It may not show immediately. So, by over a period of time lot of things can happen especially we have seen many GERD is one important thing then uh, uh, and even also acid peptic disease is another one, aggravation of cirrhosis is another one, inflammatory bowel disease is also uh, one of the things which uh, can be. Uh, Prescribed or aggravated by this dietary change. So, best thing is to follow is you know our mainly Indian diet, do not go for the western diet, avoid fatty foods, avoid uh, uh, the school drinks, aerated drinks, saturated fats, all these things are very detrimental to the human body. So, going for a traditional Hindi, uh, <coughs> our uh, Indian diet is very beneficial for the persons and avoiding all habits like smoking and alcohol, this also will aggravate the pre-existing problems and always whenever there is a change in your body habits like change in your body structure or change in any symptoms always better to consult the doctor before taking a self medication. Because pe people with STT or people with loose motions they just go, go to the counter and ask for some medicines, but such things ok for one or two days it is ok, but again if it is a long term therapy ultimately you are missing the diagnosis, you are missing the main treatment which are treatable in the early stage you are neglecting and then the patient can land into data, severe problems.